Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about the water cycle. Have you ever wondered where our drinking water is from? Some of us might be buying bottles of it, and some of us just get it from our faucets. But that's all there is we know. But I got a hint for you. The ones that we pee might also be the ones that we drink. But don't worry because it goes through a cycle to get clean first before we drink it. So what cycle is this? Let's dive in and find out. Much like water, you too go to a cycle every day. Your daily routine is an example of a cycle. You wake up and you go to school. Then you ride the bus home. You play after. Then you eat dinner and you go to bed. And you wake up again. And this repeats every weekday. Fun fact learners, did you know that the adult body is 50 to 60% water? And in terms of bodies of water on Earth's surface, it covers almost 71%. Indeed, water is everywhere. The Earth doesn't have an unlimited supply of water for us to drink safely. So Mother Nature does the cleaning of the dirty water for us. So can you guess what are some processes involved in the water cycle? If you answered rain, well, you are not wrong. Now let's discuss the processes in the water cycle. Since it is a cycle, we can begin anywhere. But for now, let's start with evaporation and transpiration. Ever noticed the white smoke that rises up in your hot coffee? Well, that's water evaporating and it is called as a water vapor. In nature, where there are large bodies of water, evaporation also occurs. That happens when the sun heats up water and turns the water into vapor. Water evaporates from all sorts of bodies of water like rivers, lakes, ponds, and whatever body of water that is exposed to the heat of the sun. But mostly, it's from the vast ocean, since no tree or shade covers the sea. Even your sweat becomes vapor. Plants also play a role in the evaporation of water. Trees and plants also sweat in a way like us. Transpiration is a process that involves the water vapor to be released into the atmosphere. But sometimes there is something that happens to water where it turns directly into a gas without first becoming a liquid and this process is called sublimation. If you notice an ice, you can observe that it emits water vapor as well even if there is no sun, right? And that's sublimation. Next is the condensation. Now the water vapor from the bodies of water and from plants go to a higher place. Can you guess where it is? Yes, into the atmosphere, forming the clouds. When the water vapor gets extremely cold, it changes back to water in liquid form. Up above where the winds are chilly, it is where the water vapor is stored up in the form of clouds. It's so fun to see many shapes of them. Sometimes they don't seem to move and sometimes they seem to move fast. That's because clouds move with the air currents. Have you ever poured cold water in a cup on a hot day? You can notice water droplets form on the side of the cup. Now that is a form of condensation. Next part of the water cycle is the precipitation. More water vapor is collected in the clouds as time passes, and the clouds become darker. That means it is becoming very heavy and thick. If this continues, water droplets can be formed and start falling from the clouds. This is called precipitation. Well, we know it is as rain and drizzle, but it can also be in the form of snow, and sometimes it can even become ice on the way down. This is called hail. Snow and ice can also be combined, forming a slit. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest recorded hailstone in the US was nearly as big as a volleyball? It fell on July 23, 2010, in Vivian, South Dakota. Hail can also destroy billions of properties and crops. Sometimes it, it is very dangerous so stay inside during this time. On the other hand, precipitation can be helpful for watering plants and crops 
for other living things. Precipitation also helps regulate water temperatures and water levels in the dams we're drinking from. We would have droughts if it weren't for the rains. Collection is the last step of our water cycle. Once rain hits the ground, it forms puddle or even floods, but mostly it goes to rivers, lakes and some of it goes back to the ocean, and the cycle restarts again and again. Sometimes water is sucked in the soil where plants drink them, and others get sucked deep down below and get filtered by the soil, thus becoming clean, and goes to an underground water flow called an aquifer. So learners, now we've learned how water gets recycled over and over again. Always remember to conserve water. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day.